Maybe you want to look even more important while running around in a high-vis vest or you want to integrate a GPS navigation system camouflaged as a scientific device in a scavenger hunt. Either way, old lab equipment is the way to go. An acquaintance who services lab equipment gave me this, a broken gas leak detector. Having breathed gases before, you know, I'm something of an expert myself. So let's start by how these things actually work. But to not bore you too much, I will limit myself to about 30 seconds. Ambient reference air and sample air are separately sucked in by a pump. Inside, the two streams each pass an identical heating element, which is cooled by the flow. If the sample stream contains a gas which conducts heat either better or worse than the reference air, the heating element either gets colder or hotter than the reference one. The resulting difference in resistance between the heating elements gets measured and displayed. Such thermal conductivity detectors don't tell you what gas they are detecting, only that it is different from ambient air. Amazingly, none of this matters for what we are going to do with it. All we will utilize are the buttons, a potentiometer and uh, the analog gauge. We will add a GPS receiver on the outside for good reception and a magnetometer, which is basically an electronic compass. When we program target coordinates, we calculate the course towards the target and display it the direction on the gauge. LEDs will indicate the proximity to the target by changing color. Let's begin with the potentiometer and the gauge. Since this is a bidirectional gauge, the polarity of the inputs must be switched to utilize both sides. A pulse width modulated signal on the right hand pin controls the right side of the gauge and vice versa. Let's add uh, the GPS. With the GPS added and blinking in the background, we have programmed a location to the northeast as a target. The gauge always displays a bearing of 45 degrees, wherever it is pointing. That's because neither the GPS nor the microcontroller know where north is. To display the bearing correctly and to calculate a course, we need the heading of the device, also known as where it is pointing relative to north. For this we need to add a magnetometer. Having added the magnetometer, it needs to be calibrated, otherwise its outputs would be unusable. I've made a one minute short on how to do it, a link here and in the video description. Our device can now use the magnetometer to measure its orientation in Earth's magnetic field. Still wanting to point the needle northeast, we can calculate the heading and have the needle point northeast wherever the device or more accurately the magnetometer is pointing, at least in theory. Since uh, the magnetometer isn't fixed to the case yet, the gauge shows us how far and in which direction we would have to move the magnetometer for it to point northeast. So, right now we're pretty much dead on or northeast and when I move it to the right you can see it tells me that we should move it approximately 20 degrees to the left to reach northeast and vice versa. Next, the LED to indicate proximity to the target will take the place of this screw, which needs to go anyway to route the cable for the GPS antenna. As for the microcontroller, as already seen in the background, we will be using an ESP32 dev board. To power it, we will again use a lithium ferrophosphate battery, uh, 18650 this time with over discharge protection.
After assembly, we need to calibrate the magnetometer again to compensate for the influence of nearby metal, i.e. the case, the pump, the transformer or the microcontroller. For this, we need to bring the magnetometer to its final position, but then we can't fit the USB cable in anymore, which definitely isn't a design flaw. This means we need to solder some more to use uh, the pins on the microcontroller for programming via a USB to TTL converter. Also, we will add a diffuser for the LED on the front. While I'm not entirely happy with uh, the diffuser, we are now done. Turning it on, we first have to move the needle to zero several times using the potentiometer. After a few seconds, it changes to a new value and we can reset it to zero again. Although, to be honest, we don't really have to do this. This is a fictitious calibration mode which uh, just serves to bridge time until the GPS has a proper position fix. Once it has a fix, the blue LED turns off and the gauge shows the direction of the target. Moving it around, you can see that it always points in the same direction, at least as long as it is within the range of the gauge, of course. To substantiate the claim that uh, moving the probe around is necessary, which it is not, a red wire has been added to the tubing to give the impression of hidden electronics inside the probe. Pressing this button we activate high sensitivity mode, which calculates the distance to the target and indicates it with colors from red to green. Once we are close, as defined in code, it will begin flashing. We can use the device, for example, in a scavenger hunt, where it can act as a treasure detector, emergency beacon finder, or whatever fits the story. If needed, the target GPS coordinates could be updated once we are close to generate a trail to follow, or be manually changed using a Wi-Fi access point opened by the microcontroller inside to which we connect with the phone. But for now, let's find out where this device leads me. Oh, one last thing. Now we're ready. The LED started flashing, so I guess we must be close. Well, that's a crappy treasure. <laughs>